Jättebra. Tack så mycket. Så kan vi vara lite olika. Vi kommer att presentera lite olika sätt. Lite medtech, life science och jag kommer att presentera på ett olika sätt. Det vill säga på engelska. So, I'll switch over now. I hope that's okay with everyone. So my name is Daniel Simon. I'm a researcher at Linköping University, actually in Norrköping, where we work on a technology that we refer to as organic bioelectronics. And this is basically conducting plastics. So materials that are soft, flexible, visual plastics. Sorry. As well as materials that communicate very well with cells, tissue, and parts of the body. So what I'll we'll be talking about today is how we hope to be able to couple this technology to existing pacemakers to enhance the capability of pacemakers. So today around 4 million people around the world have pacemakers implanted. It's a pretty large market as you can see from the very beginning here. 700,000 are implanted annually and the market is expected to grow by 2030. Now there are a variety of different problems. Uh, the biggest problem that we want to address here is that it's very easy for a pacemaker to raise the heart frequency. You simply pulse the pacemaker, you can get the heart to beat at whatever frequency you want, higher than it is now, but to get the heart frequency to sink lower, to reduce the heart frequency, you can't do that with a pacemaker. You need other implants, you need drugs. This affects many, many people. So about 110 million people around the world have angina, which is basically a name for chest pain. So this is pain associated, uh, the familiar arm pain that, uh, that comes before a heart attack, general chest pain. There's something called tachycardia, which is basically low heart rate. It affects up to 16% of people who have other cardiac problems. And today, if we want to treat something like this, you need something like an injection, you need to carry around your sheet of pills to take calcium channel blockers, other pharmaceuticals that could have significant side effects. And the, the treatments are actually quite invasive. If you, if you have a significant problem, you have to have both a pacemaker as well as another small piece of equipment implanted somewhere in your body, to, one to raise the frequency, one to lower the frequency. So what we propose to do with Iontronics is to couple our ion pump technology, which is a patented technology, onto existing ion pumps. So in the end, something that would look very much, sorry, onto existing pacemakers. Something that in the end would look very much like a pacemaker today, but with this added technology that could both raise and lower heart frequency, and thereby increase patient life expectancy, decrease patient visits to the hospital, and decrease drug costs, as well as have something that's regulated internally instead of having to rely on a patient taking pills. So a little bit about the technology. What we have here is a non-liquid flow drug delivery component. So this is something that we can push a button or have some sort of regulated circuitry, turn on a voltage, and out the other side of the device, we have neurotransmitters, drugs, other pharmaceuticals delivered to very precise points and with very precise dosage. We can get into the details of that later if you want to come and talk. The point is that there's no liquid flow. We're not adding any liquid to the system. And it's very common in a biological setting. You don't want to disrupt a fragile environment. So if there's a very fragile balance of biochemicals around the heart, you don't want to blast that away by hosing it down with some addition of liquid. You want to have a very gentle, very local delivery of some pharmaceutical. So the problem, we have a heart that's beating too quickly here. And we want to, over time, turn on delivery from the device. And we get this diffusive cloud of drugs or uh, neurotransmitters coming out of the device and the heart slows down. Now, of course, this is a cartoon. It's not actual data. We've shown this sort of behavior with cells, with tissue, and in multiple anim animal models so far. And what we have is very precise control of delivery. The electronic current that we measure in the circuit, a circuit that could be very small, built into the side of a, of a pacemaker, tells exactly how much of the drug is delivered. We also have very high resolution in space and time. So the idea here, for the company and for this part of uh, our proposal is to build this technology directly onto the lead that's coming off of the pacemaker. So add additional layers, just several microns thick, on the outside of the pacemaker lead and we add this functionality. So this is what I mean. The device would look exactly like a pacemaker until you look very closely through a microscope and you see that there's this added functionality on the very lead itself. And what's, what's important here is that the implant procedure is already established. We're not adding anything new for the surgeons to do when they put a pacemaker in. Now the technology is based on a wide range of competence, uh, or I like to think so. 
Of course, my background at Linjiping University, where we work in the Organic Electronics Materials Lab. We have a very strong component of the technology at Acrio, which actually shares space with us, where they have printing facilities, industrial R&D experience, and then throughout the entire life cycle so far of the, of the technology, we've been working in close collaboration with the Karolinsk Institute, so cell biologists and application-driven input into how to develop the technology. So a little look at the market. Today, the pacemaker market is about 5.1 billion US dollars. It's got a, about an 11% annual growth rate. Of course, most of this is in the US and the EU, but the, the market in Asia is growing significantly. There is continued research on pacemakers, but generally the research relates to small enhancements. Wireless technology, for example, is a very big one right now. So maybe a wireless coupling between the electrode on the heart and the pacemaker driver somewhere else in the chest cavity. It's not really adding a functionality, it's adding a cool extra feature. What we want to do is actually add something new. So what we hope to do is actually enhance a pacemaker's fundamental capabilities. So not just add a new gadget, add a new switch, add a new week or two to the lifetime of the device, but make it able to do something that no other pacemaker can do. So a quick calculation that we've done of the, of the market shows that if there are about 400 pacemakers implanted annually, it's about 10,000 crowns per pacemaker, if we attach ourselves to one of the big players in the market, say 25%, we had a small licensing fee, we're looking at something like 20 million crowns in licensing fees off of the patents. And I should say that as of now, we have four patents, three in application phase, one accepted on ion pump technology, so it's well covered. Now, the goal at the long term is sell to one of these big players. Two of the biggest are St. Jude Medical and Boston Scientific. And it's not at all unheard of for recent research technology, re recent additions to pacemaker technologies to be sold to one of these companies. These are just some of the examples that we were able to find. And you can see the sums are fairly large. Of course, from the research side, there's still a lot to do. And from the business side, there's still a lot to do. There's enhancements to the technology, questions of lifetime, which we're working on right now, of course. I have to add a little bit of research since I'm a researcher. Um, but from the marketing side, we want to sp spread our full bioelectronics patent portfolio through the market. So it's not just this one ion pump technology, but other organic bioelectronic technologies, other uses of conducting polymers, which are very biocompatible materials. So a little bit about the company. As Gunilla mentioned, we are under the umbrella of the OBOE uh, consortium owned by OBOE IPR. This stands for Organic Bioelectronics. And this is a researcher-owned uh, company. So we, we drive the company. It's not yet controlled by anyone else outside of us and some input from the universities. Iontronics is in startup phase and it'll be owned eventually by the inventors such as myself and some of the people at Acrio and Karolinska as well as the eventual entrepreneur that we're seeking right now. There are other, maybe you saw the Selloway presentation, that's another OBOE technology. And then we have the OBOE Research Center, which is our continuing academic research and industrial uh, R&D branch. So you can find out more about Iontronics at our websites. The Iontronics website itself is still under construction, but you can find all the information that you'd like at OBOE Center, or contact me. And then a little bit about who we're seeking. We're looking for an entrepreneur uh, who can work with researchers and the original inventors to develop the technology for the right attachment to the right player on the market. So, of course, someone who's willing to speak English from time to time, um, and to lead the tech onto the market and to lead other organic bioelectronics technologies onto the market along with Iontronics. So with that, Taksiyotemike, oh, Froga Tebaka.